Good evening and welcome. We are getting close or maybe just a little bit past the halfway mark of the basketball season. It's heating up. We've got some great games out there for you tonight. Some close games. We've shoveled all the snow. Andy Michelle, Matt Here. Hatfield, and we'll start things off in Chesapeake as the Grassfield Grizzlies play host to the Tall Wood Lions. Two teams that are in different districts, different conferences, but you never know they could run into each other in the playoffs in 6A South. Early on, here we go. In the white, it's Grassfield. This is John Cover from three from outside in a corner three. He's one of the weapons for second year head coach Tony Collins, who came to Grassfield a year ago from the college ranks. He coached college ball at Virginia State, among other places. Tallwood with the step back jumper in the corner. It is good from three point range by Tyree Golston, the junior. And a pretty good lead out there for Grassfield early on, 23 to 11, as we head to the second quarter. But they're not done yet. Grassfield on the move. Adrian Beasley inside, swatted, no, gets knocked down, but it's picked right back up by Lockehan, and he scores. And Grassfield's size, and you can see, is having an effect early on with Tallwood. They've got guys at 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", even a couple guys close to 6'8", as they use that length inside. But Tyree Golston, he is quick, making a play defensively and turning it into instant offense for Tom Gonzalez's Lions as they cut into that lead, 39-31 in favor of the Grizzlies midway through the third quarter. Yes, into the second half we go, and here down low on the block, it's Beasley this time on offense and the baseline jumper for the big man. Showing the bright future for Tallwood, uh, Golston and Beasley, two juniors that will be back next year. An eight-point lead now for Grassfield late in the third period, now going off the bounce to get something done. It is Tristan Coleman making it happen. Last minute of the third quarter is an eight-point lead for Grassfield. Tallwood trying to get something going. They find Kenny Smith. Nice ball movement. Eventually, there he is, in the corner, and the three ball is good for Smith. You know what the coaches say, make the extra pass. It makes us as coaches look good when you do it. It's now just a five point lead for Grassfield. So Tallwood hanging tough, but the Grizzlies at home trying to put it away. And there is Cover again, knocking down the jumper. Nice stop and pop in the lane. 48-45, it's getting tight. Into the fourth quarter we go. Grassfield up by three, trying to add to that lead. Get something going here. Some more ball movement for the Grizzlies, and they go inside, and the ball movement pays off. Josh Berman underneath. One of those big fellas that Grassfield will use inside to carry them home. A six-point advantage with under six minutes to go. Can Tallwood complete the comeback? We're going to need some defensive stops to get it done. And Grassfield with possession now, and they're looking around, trying to get in the lane there. It's Coleman there as he finds a man underneath oh, uncovered. Man. It's Colin Reese for two. Big man inside getting it done for the Grizzlies. Still with the ball now, trying to expand that lead and put this thing away. Here's Culver in the reverse, using the rim to protect the ball. That's basics. Look at that. Oh, a nifty maneuver there. He can not only shoot, but he can get it done with his dribbling. A four-point lead and Tallwood with a chance to pull within two or one. It's Isaiah Macer going to the 10. No good, but Herman Allen is there with the second chance. And we're getting tight here. Look at this. 55-53, one and a half minutes to go. Grizzlies trying to ice it on the break, and there's Reese. Open and the big man finishes, but the guy runs down. Big man runs, you got to reward him. Feed him. Oh, pleasing to see the big man run the floor. 57-53, just finish it off at the free throw line, and Reese will do that, knocking it down. A five-point lead with 13 seconds to go, and they will win it by six. 59-53, the Grizzlies protect their home court in Chesapeake, defeating a Tallwood team that's jockeying for position in Conference 1 with Lanstown and Kellum. You see Cover and Coleman combining for 29 points. Nine rebounds and eight assists to lead the Grizzlies, while Tyree Golson led the way for Tallwood with 17. Pretty good game between two guys that aren't really familiar with each other. As we move on, this is Norview at Green Run. Norview in the blue, Green Run in the white as we head to the beach in the Norfolk district. And there's an alley-oop off the tip. Damari Wood finishes. Yeah, you see Amani Wood there, and he gets it on a second time from Sterling Carrington to Sean Wade. So many weapons for this undefeated Green Run team. And there's Justin Barnett with a three-pointer. Right out of the gate, it's 8 nothing in front of the packed house. The host Stallions in the lead. Finally, Norview gets something going, and it's Keontae Johnson for two. And then they continue with more. It's Lamont Stewart scores inside. And just like that, the game's deadlocked at 8 apiece. And Norview trying to take the lead, won't do it here. But you see Keontae Johnson with the offensive rebound, and then finding Jalen Frazier inside for two. Lamont Stewart with the baseline jumper. And guess what? It's a 13-all game as we head to the second quarter. It didn't look like that in the beginning. 
Uh oh, showtime. It is Wood on the run with a one handed stop. Another jam for the junior, six foot six there. And then uh, uh, it looks like a block there, but they'll say it's a flagrant foul. He actually called a double technical as the motions got a little high there. Stewart hitting the free throw, Deshaun Wade hitting the free throw. And they bring both coaches, Kenneth Harris and Jonathan Wilson, together, saying, hey, no more of that. Let's play clean. Here's Wade from outside, and he connects three, hits a three. And now inside, Norby will go again with their length and athleticism. Jalen Frazier for two, but Green Run answers with Torrey Fields' three on the feed from Najon Nobles. From the wing, he connects. Underneath this time, we can go inside, look at that. And that's Caleb Moore off the feed from Wade. It's 28-25. A big bucket before the break, and then Sterling Carrington getting it going inside, and Green Run's transition game, it's lethal. Ooh. And it's a jam session for Amani Wood, his third dunk of the game. They can play defense, too. Wood with the block and the scramble back the other way. Ashley James to Carrington, and he scores. Green Run now starting to try to pull away here as you see why they're coming in with 14 wins, no losses, trying to go to 15-0. Damon Showers for two. A 12-point lead. Can Norview respond? In the fourth quarter, Norview does try to get something going here. Frazier scores inside. Then they leave Johnson open on the inbound pass for a three-pointer. That's not the guy you leave open because he's their best three-point playmaker. And now you see inside the tap-in is good for Wood. And then Najon Nobles driving to the 10 and gets it to go off glass. 45-32. Tick, tick, tick. James from outside connecting. James, the freshman, giving Green Run its biggest lead at 16 in the game. Torrey Fields, no. Torrey Fields, yes, as the Stallions continue to deliver. Inbound pass. Uh oh, that's going the wrong way. This is Stewart. Oh, the Euro step. Look at that. I'm pretty moved there. And then another tough foul as Elijah Blue knocks down Najon Nobles, who will connect at the charity stripe. And Coach Kenneth Harris, all he can do is laugh. 54 41, one minute. Just around one minute to go. They pass it around, more ball movement and more threes. William Stinger, a long three. And then another foul here, so Green Run trying to ice it at the free throw line. And Nobles connects, but Norview not done shooting threes as it's Stinger again from way yeah. downtown. Way, he shot that from the parking lot. It's cliche, I know, but it still works. Here's Stoward, and he hits another three. Lots of threes at the end and making an eight point game. Kind of put away, but the threes made it exciting. Green Run moves to 15 0. Sterling Carrington and Amani Will with 12 points apiece, while Norview drops to 10 and 6 overall. Lamont Stewart and Jalen Frazier combining for 27 points and 25 rebounds. We've got more action. Oof, it's fast and it's furious, and we got more coming up. Stay with us right here on the Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Michelle. I am Matthew Hatfield and it's now the ladies' turn as we check in on some girls basketball action in Norfolk as the Lake Taylor Titans play host to the Deep Creek Hornets in a Conference 17 tilt, a very pivotal one as both teams near the playoffs. Deep Creek in the blue, Lake Taylor in the white, getting it started right off the bat, off the miss and the rebound as Monet Johnson gets it in. And Monet Johnson again will miss here but there is Janaya Somerville with the putback as Lake Taylor's offensive rebounding very critical for Coach Sandra Sawyer's group. And Tyler Happo with a nice runner in the paint. Followed up by Ship, Adriana Ship connect with a jumper. Ship again for Deep Creek as Coach Kip Sutton's group answering Lake Taylor. But there's the defense as Ferris gets the steal and scores. Watch out for her on defense. She's a pest. 13-7 Lake Taylor. Into the first quarter. Into the second quarter we go. On the break, it's a stop and pop three from deep. It's Belia Dunn. But there's Carlisha Ferris again swiping it away. Swiper, no swiping. It's a layup for Lake Taylor as the defense is turning into instant offense. And then the corner three from Ferris is good. Ship again on the follow. This is fast and furious action on another three from the other side from Monet Johnson. Offensive rebounding the key for Lake Taylor. Three point shooting the answer for Deep Creek as they connect again in the corner. It's 23 all at the break. Quick, fast moving action and inside it's Diamond Hamilton inside. Not a Bond villain, a good forward and she scores. Shalante Russell going into paint for Deep Creek and paying off there. And now another three point try for Deep Creek. It's Maya Thomas, money from the corner. The 
feed from ship on that one. Then down low, it's Russell again. This is not the other Russell. This is Shante Russell who scored. And worry about Shante and Shalante. And you also have to worry about Monet Johnson for Lake Taylor. Her team leads at 34 to 30 heading to the fourth quarter. The runner from Somerville on the baseline. And quickly the other way, it's Happer from three. Happer shooting from all over the place, and so is another one of those teammates, Bela Dunn. But this time an offensive rebound, and it's good Ooh. for Deep Creek. Give it to Happer. Look at the tip. And then the ball movement at the other end. Christina Leary scores. And Leary, her older sister, was on that state championship winning team for Coach Sawyer and the Titans. And now Deep Creek going off the bounce to get it done. Maya Thomas, 42 to 40 as we go down the stretch. Here we go, and there is Russell inside, but she's fouled. And the chance to tie it at the line. Hits the first and the second is good. That's ice water. Ice water in the veins for Russell. Two clutch ones for Shalante. Can Lake Taylor win it here at the end of regulation? They're looking for somebody open. Johnson's got it. Can she hang on to it? Trying to get it. Time is ticking away. In the corner for three. It's Marquisha pull at the horn. Oh. No good. That means we've got extra fun. Free basketball, ladies and gentlemen, as we head to overtime. And it's Somerville. Same spot on the baseline. Same result on the baseline. Oh, she's making things happen everywhere, and so is Monet Johnson, a tandem for Coach Sawyer and company, but Deep Creek, they're resilient. They come right back with that inside punch of Shalante Russell. And that pass is tipped, but they do get it out on the break. Watch the feed. Oh, look at the pass. It's Thomas to Williams on the finish. Threading the needle, 50, 50 here. Well, we have two overtimes coming. Deep Creek trying to win it here at the end of the first one. And it's a heave, no good for Tiara Williams, so a second OT coming your way. More free basketball. They started off on the wing, and that is Williams, and she cashes in on the three. You creak up three in overtime, but Somerville cutting it into one, and then they get the lead right here on the runner by Carlisha Ferris, Ooh. and Lake Taylor hangs on at home, 62-54. You see Somerville with 21 points, 17 rebounds, eight assists. She almost had a triple-double in this one, while Happer had 18 points to lead the way for Deep Creek in defeat. A good one there. Baby's putting on a show. Could Cave Springs and Carroll County match that show? We quickly go out west and we quickly find Zach Shannon. The senior power forward getting it done for Jacob Proust and company and that Cave Spring defense, oh, it is tough. Turning into a layup the other way. Paxton Daniels finding Mason Rayer in the open quarter. More Cave Springs. You're noticing a, a trend here. The team in white, lots of points and Hicks hits a three. Brody Hicks committed to play his college hoops at Liberty and now at the control has Devin Beckner finding Hicks from deep there. 28 to Knight. 4 in the second quarter. The Knights are pouring it on. Finally, could Carroll County get something going? Yes, Noah Johnson hits a three. Much needed there for the Cavaliers of Carroll County and led by Jordan Combs who had a double-double of 14 points, 14 boards in the chance Harmon against uh, Christiansburg. But there is Beckner. He is quick and he can make you pay. Not such a great pass, but it does make them pay. They try to get some offense here, run some clock, do something here. Finally, eventually, they get the long jumper in the corner, just around the three-point line for Caden Hodges, and that one's good. Caden Hodges, that second option behind Combs there, and Combs has got it now top of the key, defending closely, and does the nice thing, finding his teammate for the three-pointer as the Cavaliers starting to cut into that Cave Spring lead. Can they just stop them from getting these runouts, though? That's the question. Back-to-back -back shots for Hodges, and then another bad turnover equals Beckner to Steele for the score. And Jared Steele giving Coach Cruz's group a lift, and so is Baker Havlin, the six-foot-seven junior center. Look at him Ooh. making a play on defense, running the court, and finishing at the rim. The big man with the quick hands at halftime, 53-24, all Cave Springs. Cave Springs showing why they're a top 10 ranked team in the state in Group 3A, trying to make it to Richmond and the Siegel Center for the state tournament. And look at the ball movement again, a nice cutting play there. You got Steele, you got Beckner, you got Hicks, so many options for Cave Spring. Back down, finally they find some offense. They find their best player, Jordan Combs, the first time all night it seems like. Getting it done in the post now, but Hicks there. Going to pump fake and then throw it in the corner to an open teammate, and that's going to be good. No, it's not. It's going to be a rebound, and there's Haviland. So you think it's going in, and they have offensive rebounders there. They got guys all over the place. Now here, Cave Springs trying to move the ball around some. Get that uh, the Hoosier looking offense. It looks like Hoosiers out here. But a couple of moves, and they finally get it inside. And the hook shot eventually. Here he comes, right here. Here's the hook shot. I ruined the high. There it is. Hook shot for Ogan Bowman with the hook shot. Bowman looking like a young Andy Michal out there at Cave Spring <laughs> High School, getting it done. <laughs> Three pointer from Jared Steele. He's a man of steel, getting it done everywhere for Coach Cruz and company. And now a steal here for Cave Spring on the other end. It is junior shooting guard Brad Kinder with the layup. 
76-33 as we head to the final quarter. Looking for some mercy here for Carrollton County. Inside, they finally get one. Just Chase Robinson, he scores off the glass. And then Carroll County, a team that's playing in four, a cave spring in three, cool. and there's a steal for Jared Steele again, and he gets it to go against contact. Steele stepping it up. Look at the behind the back pass. Look at the move. Carrollton looking to get something done. On the baseline, nice little move there by Landon Williams. And the second unit making some plays for Carroll County. You know that to appreciate that, Coach Brad Hawks and company. But three-point shooting, too much for Cave Spring as they put up 90 on the board, five trays from Brody Hicks, winning it by a total of 49 points. Baker Havlin contributing 14 points, while Combs and Hodges combined for 25 in the loss for Carroll County. But we're not done yet. Avalanche of points. We've got more highlights coming. Avalanche of highlights. We come back to the east side of the state for more action right here on Sports Report. Report continues with some basketball action. This time we've got public versus private school. Private schools with the smaller enrollment sometimes struggle in football, but man, can they play some basketball. They certainly can. And to the tree house we go. It's Norfolk Collegiate playing host to Norcom. And you had to get there early, Andy, because they had people lined up outside to get to this one. KJ Davis misses the rebound here for Norfolk Collegiate's Keonze Chavis. And that will lead to a three-point opportunity for Adam Grant. No good, but there is Jakeem Robertson inside for the putback. And it's an early jump out lead for Collegiate. As they try to get things going for Norcom. It's Fields, yep. Travis Fields with the jumper. He's getting looked at by Grambling State, Albany, a bunch of schools at the Division I level. The 4A State Player of the Year a season ago. Now he's playing 3A basketball. And there's Darian Allison, one of those super subs for Leon Goolsby's Greyhounds, cashing in inside. It's now 14 all, so Norcom rallying early. This game leaving up to the uh, expectations so far. The big man with the spin move down low from Bash Town. 29-24, Norcom in the lead as they go to the second half as the Greyhounds would get some lifts from their second unit there. And Travis Ingram, three-pointer counted on the feed from Travis Fields. It's the Travis and Travis show. Oh, that looks like a replay, but it's not. It's Ingram with another shot. And then the slashing move. Look at Adam Grant sky. It's a big head. He's even got his own fat head. You tell you, that tells you how popular he is out there at Norfolk Collegiate. And there's Darian Allison in the lane for two. The fans loving it. Again, you didn't have much room to sit with each other. Everybody's packed in there like sardines. There's Jalen Gordon for two. Too. All the fans are loving the action in this one. It's a tight one, Andy. Tight one as we move on. It'll be KJ Davis. Here is where, there it is. Okay, here we go now. It's, it's the fourth quarter, 34 44, 10 point lead, and there's Davis. Lots and lots of Davis in this game, but he hits that one. Davis had three threes in the second quarter alone and got hot late. Bash Towns inside, muscling his way for two. Allison to the 10, Ooh. no good, but there's Tommy Pope. Oh, he can't get the roll. It goes out of bounds. This one's going to go right down to the wire, it looks like. And Travis Ingram says, get that out of here. At the other end, it is Ingram who picks it up. And he looks like he got tackled. Again, as Ingram swats away Kyle McNair, who's really stepped it up for Norfolk Collegiate lately. But it's defensive plays like that that will win you ball games. Later on, it's down low as Grant to Chavis underneath for a couple. A one-point game, now a two-point game. Bash Towns is blocked by KJ Davis, gets the ball. Yeah, this time he's going to be fouled by Davis, so two free throws with 14 seconds left and a chance to send it to overtime. And he makes the free throws. Ice water in the veins. One last shot, and it comes up short. Just too short. The desperation heave does not go, and guess what, folks? More free basketball. The crowd loves it. Overtime. Here we go. Norfolk Collegiate erases an 11 point deficit with under three minutes to go to have life here in the OT, but they're going to have to stop KJ Davis because this guy got hot in the fourth quarter in overtime. 22 points Ooh. in those two periods alone. Look at a fadeaway there. Here's a long jumper that won't go, but guess what? There's a putback from Chavis, and in the end, it would be Norcom holding on, just barely staving off Norfolk Collegiate. KJ Davis has 40 points, the most by a Norcom player since Darius Theus had 42 back in 2008. You see Ingram with 14 points, nine boards, three blocks, while Towns and Grant combined for 45 points and 18 rebounds in the loss for the Oaks. Let's go to the beach. Why not? It's Cox and it's Lansdowne as we head 
to the home of the Eagles. It's a Virginia Beach rivalry and also playing for positioning in the conference, Coastal Conference one standings as Lancetown was the champion of that conference last year. Cox trying to pull the upset on the road and be sneaky. Cox in the green, Lancetown in the white. Right off the bat, it's pressure and a steal taken away by the Eagles and finishing at the hole is Maurice Jones. Maurice Jones and Darius Evans, the two backcourt leaders for Dwight Robinson's Eagles, trying to make it to the state tournament for a third consecutive year. Cox, they're inside. They Ooh. find Kelvin Nicholson on the feed from Tavian Robinson. Throw it down, big man. Big time play right there, and it's a 9-9 nine to nine game after the first quarter. Everybody, can we score more points? I think we should score more. We should not let them score points. That's what, that's what happens in the hub. That's pretty much what they're saying in there. <laughs> and also like to use a dry race board, you know, wipe things up and write things up there. Michael Christmas, remember this name, Andy. He's a 6'5 yeah, freshman. He's got skills, he's got range, and he's got touch. He's got a, a David Robinson haircut, but it works. To the outside, to the corner, and that is good if A.J. Smith from three. He was the backup quarterback to Cole Johnson on football field, showing he can get it done on the hardwood now. And Cox against that trapping Lancetown defense. Oh, there's a steal. Darius Evans has it, and Darius Evans will pull up and sink the jumper. The steal and the transition jumper all working for Evans. And back the other way, here comes Cox on the run. That is swapped away and picked up by the defense. It is Jones on the open floor. Jones over to Marks, and he scores. And Lancetown's guard really have any effect defensively turning Cox over. But the Falcons have the lead 21 to 19 early in the third quarter as their defense has hung tough. And another steal for Lansdowne. This is Jones again on the run. And why not go right back to Marks? It worked the first time. It works again. And keep what's working right now. And Lansdowne knows that Michael Christmas is a guy that can make it work. It's the three pointer. And look at the oh. six foot five freshman displaying the range there on a the shot. The big man from outside. Cox trying to answer though. They got their own big man. He kicks it outside. Greg Hahn to Robinson and Robinson hits a three. That's rare to see a couple of bigs in basketball at the high school level effective on both ends of the court. We're seeing that with this Lansdowne Cox battle. But Lansdowne right now sharing the basketball so effectively as it's Darius Wallace to Eric Marks and he hits it from three point land. More ball movement this time from the Eagles. Look at them moving it around and they find, guess who? Merry Christmas from the free throw line. Another one for the big guy. Who said you can have Christmas in January or February? Lansdowne does, but Cox trying to get some transition points of their own here. A.J. Smith with the layup here as they cut into that Lansdowne lead. The Eagles, though, really taking control in the third quarter now as Bryson Stooks looks for Noah Boone. Hey, that's two football teammates, also basketball teammates, and making it work. Not a lot of yards on that, but they get two points. 42-26 as the third quarter spurt, really allowing Lansdowne to seize momentum here. And again, that defense making Cox have to work here. And there you see... Whoa. Look at that move by Nate Edwards for two. I don't know if it's pretty, but it counts for two points. He'll take it. At the other end, though, it is in the corner again, and that is Edmonds, and that is a three-pointer. And you see Lansdowne striking from inside and outside here as their perimeter game, giving them the lead. And now Cox the other way. It's Tavian Robinson, no good, but Greg Hahn there, the big man with the putback. And the Falcons going to have to try to make something happen defensively to turn into some quick offense. And it'll be Frazier Wall from three. It's good. That is good, and the Cox tried to make this a little bit close, but in the end, just too much Lansdowne. Final score, 54-39. Christmas with 11, while Evans and Marks had 10 apiece. Cox outscored 23-5 in the third quarter, but A.J. Smith had 19 points. But well, we're out of time. Andy Michal, I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.